I'm going to start a playlist on my channel called Turf Island so that I can keep track of all the times we talk about how terrible things are in the UK for trans people. It's bad. And they continue to escalate their, frankly, like attacks on trans existence. And in this case, they're going after the kids. When are they, when are they going to stop stooping low? They keep saying like, they go low, we go high, but I don't really feel like that's workable anymore. But yeah, anyway, today the government has published guidance for schools for gender questioning children. We did this because many schools told us they didn't know how to how to deal with this issue. Here's the full thing. We might look at it in a second. There is no general duty on schools to allow a child to socially transition. No child is born in the wrong body. So their official guidance is basically like, trans people are not valid. Some children may not like their body and we should help them, but social transitioning is not a neutral act and should only happen in rare circumstances. And, um, you know, outright saying that they think that there should be as few trans people as possible. Hey, real quick, hit the like button if you're enjoying the content. Hit the subscribe button as well and turn on all notifications. And also take a moment to check out the links in the description for merchandise and Patreon where you can find exclusive free content. Social transitioning is not a neutral act. Like, okay, so they're, I think they're implying that it's a negative act. We would say that it's a positive act. Like I wouldn't say that socially transitioning with a child is gonna like, I, like I don't think that that's a neutral act. I think it's a good thing, but she is implying that it's a bad thing. Conversion therapy time, yeah. Like, like their official position is we don't need to affirm. And not only do we not need to affirm, but our official position is no child is born in the wrong body. So we won't affirm is kind of, un I think that they're saying we won't affirm unless the parents absolutely insist. Yeah, this is, I mean, I don't know that this is like advocating strictly for conversion therapy, but it is social conversion in that sense of, yeah, if we just, if we just socially refuse to indulge this behavior, then it will not persist. The principle of biological sex is real. Schools and colleges have specific legal duties that are framed by a child's biological sex. Sex is not, quote, assigned at birth. It is observed at birth, and schools need to be aware of this. Gender stereotypes do not define sex. Like, the reason why we're talking about this, guys, is that this is their whole country. It's not like how we do this in the States, where yeah, obviously, if you live in Arkansas, they're probably gonna be teaching in the schools that sex is binary and there's no such thing as blah, 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 trans people, like all this. This is their whole country. This is section 28 all over again. If you're not familiar, section 28 was the rule in the UK, in Britain, that was like, yeah, you're not allowed to talk about gayness or trans people to a lesser extent. That wasn't like the main focus of it at all in the schools, like until they're in college, basically. So kids couldn't receive support from their teachers if they were experiencing homophobic bullying. If a kid had parents who were not affirming, they couldn't go to any of their teachers and confide. They were not allowed to talk about it. Trans person trying to help a cis person understand dysphoria saying, it's like I'm in the wrong body. Transphobes screaming. Uh, yeah, they can't handle it. We try to create cute little metaphors to help them understand. And then they go, well, that's not real. It's like, Karen, we're just trying to help you kind of grok the general concept. This is the normalization of we can teach you not to be that, and that will inevitably lead to conversion therapy. Right. Like, the official guidance for a teacher, if a student is like, I think I might be trans, the official guidance is for the teacher to basically respond, no, you're not. Nobody's born in the wrong body. Nobody's trans. I've lost friends to conversion therapy. Two kids from my state, uh disappeared over one summer. One did not make it to 18, the other made it to age 24. Fuck conversion therapy, even something that hints toward that end goal, I would like to burn to the ground. Right, I don't think, yeah, like that ideology is something that we should be opposed to. That construct is deeply harmful to people. The third principle is that parents should be included in all decisions relating to a child's requests to socially transition. No one loves children more than their parents, and it is wrong to exclude parents from what can be a pathway to irreversible medical decisions. So first of all, you can't get medical care in the UK without your parents' consent, I'm pretty sure. And you basically can't get medical care as a teenager at all because the wait lists are so long. 
you know, sometimes people ask, hey, can you put me on the wait list for adults instead? Because the wait list for the kids is so long, I will be an adult by then and I'll have to start all the way over. So I don't know why you're worried about a quote pathway to irreversible medical decisions. It's not like it's not like social transitioning means that the kid is going to be able to access the healthcare without their parents' consent. You people are draconic about this. And it's also really awful and most people maybe don't think about it, but you know, this position, no one loves children more than their parents. Sometimes parents violently revoke that love when they find out that their kid is trans or gay. And if the kid is confiding in someone at their school and is not telling their parents, it's because the kid is conscious and salient enough to understand that there would be negative consequences like being subjected to conversion therapy, for example, or being isolated from their friends, or being taken out of school, or being kicked out of their house. Numerous potential consequences, like from parents who, when they find out that their kids are LGBT, become abusive toward those kids. They have like this mindset that being trans is bad and they will be abusive. Like you can't always assume that the parents have the best interest at heart, in particular when you're talking about extremely vulnerable kids, like gay and trans kids. So yeah, it, you know, the forced outing of kids to their parents represents a real tangible physical danger to them. And it just is gonna create an environment where kids have zero support. It makes a huge difference for kids to have just one person in their lives who knows their name and affirms their pronouns. And for a lot of kids, that's like their art teacher or their English teacher. Anybody? Anybody down below comment, uh, comment in the chat? Did you have an art teacher or an English teacher or fill in the blank your subject here who knew or like was your safe haven as a queer kid who couldn't like go to your parents? So she continues, fourth, schools and colleges should be respectful and tolerant places where bullying is never tolerated. We should treat each other with compassion and consideration. Like these people don't understand that they're institutionalizing bullying against trans kids. Like, ooh, I'm gonna tattle on you. I found out something about you and I'm gonna tell your parents and like, I'm gonna prevent you from having any social support. Like you've just institutionalized misgendering. My orchestra teacher told my abusive Catholic parents that she thought I was gay. Oh, that's disappointing. I'm so sorry. My art teacher was a closeted gay guy, asked me not to tell anyone. I hung out with him on lunch breaks as a young man, uh, as a young pan kid getting bullied. Thank you, law professor in college. There you go. People need to have a person that they can go to like kids deserve to be able to confide in a teacher and to trust that that teacher is gonna make sure that they're safe. And sometimes that means keeping that information to themselves. My art teacher and the secretary at the guidance office were safe people for me to talk to. Yeah, my parents knew, but they did not wanna hear about my problems. So I had to take care of things myself. It's depressing. So yes, uh, ooh, yeah. Also, we should not be compelling speech or attacking others because of their beliefs or identity. This is just, stepping our way into enshrining gender critical beliefs as a protected status that's equivalent to gender in terms of protected status, which is just a horrendous thing to do. There's also a new bill introduced in Missouri, which will force teachers to out trans kids to their parents if it passes. I think that that bill constitutes compelled speech. Agreed, yeah, is that not? I guess they're gonna treat it like mandatory reporting. Like if you're a therapist and so you're legally required to go to the police about certain types of abuse, is that compelled speech? Kind of, but it's apparently like acceptable compelled speech. So they will argue that this is like a mandatory reporting type situation where they're they're justified in doing it because of course the parents should know. Like, you know what I mean? They're not really gonna have a solid argument except parents' rights. Which again, this is like a conflict between the hypothetical idea of parents' rights, what, the parents' rights to know everything about their children, I guess, versus a child having the right to some amount of privacy. Like literally, it's just like, does a child deserve the right to privacy from their parents? This is one of those situations where we have a conflict and children are one of those groups that ends up stuck in this position so often that like they don't, like that their rights are being limited by the idea that their parents just like should be able to know everything about them as though that's integral to them, like being able to do their parenting. The schools would need to involve social services and possibly law enforcement when outing a child to transphobic parents in order to do it safely. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure how you would, if it's possible to do it in a way that isn't inherently harmful. It compels people to be transphobic. Yeah, I think outing someone without their consent is 
transphobic. Finally, she says, we outlined that schools and colleges have duties to safeguard and promote the welfare of all children, not just for those making a request for social transition, but all the children in a school. Knowing a child's sex is critical to a school's safeguarding duties. So they're saying trans people don't have a right to privacy. The school has a vested interest in knowing what their sex is because, you know, we need to, she's saying when we need to attend to the needs of all children in a school, she's saying if transphobic people if do not want their children to be around trans people, for example, in bathrooms and locker rooms, then we are going to prioritize those people's feelings over the rights of trans people to exist in public. That's pretty much what that means. Just wanna like give you a little translation of what that means. They are saying that like trans people do not have a right to privacy and trans children in particular do not have a right to privacy. Having a meeting that involves a social worker and a cop with the understanding that if anything happens to the child, the parent has serious problems. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you're going to put all these resources into a welfare check, essentially, like, if you're going to, okay, we have to out you to your parents, but we will make sure you're safe by having a cop and a social worker there. Like, you know, is that going to prevent the parent from doing the horrible thing that they were, it's like kicking the kid out is already illegal, you know? So it's like, you know, what increased scrutiny is that gonna put on it? It really irks me that people treat kids as if they are not people yet. I know, people just absolutely don't respect the rights of young folks to be, like to have privacy, to have autonomy, to be able to make their own decisions as far as being vaccinated or being on birth control, any of these things. Like, why do you think that 15 year olds are idiots? Yes, they don't know everything. Yes, they still need help making decisions. But, you know, that's like part of the point of parental consent in that instance. Um, and again, it's already not really possible in the in the NHS, as far as I understand it, for a minor child to get this kind of health care without a parental consent. So it's not as though this is like safeguarding children from getting inappropriate medical care or something. It's just preventing them from having a safe space to socially transition if they have unaccepting parents. And of course, yeah, Charlotte points out the next logical step of there being fewer or no trans kids is that there are no trans adults and that there are uh, eventually no gender non-conforming people either. They're explicitly stating that we should only allow social transition in rare circumstances. In rare, like who's deciding when that should be allowed? You're just saying we're gonna stand opposed to it unless the parents really firmly insist. A silent genocide, yeah. Laws like this are passing in the United States as well. There, uh, Someone sent me a link about one that is working through in South Carolina, I think. South Carolina bill making schools say that it's false to use trans people's pronouns. So this might be another instance where we might call this uh, compelled speech. It must be the policy of every public K through 12 educational institution provided in, in this state that the sex of a person is an immutable biological trait and that it is false to ascribe to a person a pronoun that does not correspond to such person's sex. So this would dictate in South Carolina, there's one working through in Missouri, you know, it's all over my country, it's happening as well. And I think this, this law goes further than most other ones in the US, but like the one in the UK also goes much further than most of the ones in the US. Yeah, this one, this one I think is like basically like a violation of free speech. An employee or contractor of a public K through 12 educational institution may not provide to a student his or her preferred personal title or pronouns if such preferred personal title or pronouns do not correspond to his or her sex. And of course, they're gonna believe that like, oh, sex is like the one that was assigned at birth. There is no such thing as a sex that was not assigned at birth, I guess. No, the student can't misgender the teacher because that's that's also doesn't correspond with their sex. So, you know, you can't do, you're not allowed to misgender cis people either. That's so it's equal. You're not allowed to do it to cis people. Everybody has to be called. This is just, I'm just making the argument that like, yes, you're still allowed to get married like everybody else. You can get married to someone of the opposite sex. You know, that's, that's the joke that I was making. I will say about the South Carolina bill, when responding to the bill, a local pediatrician, Dr. Michael O'Brien, offered the bill's sponsor his insight into the bill, stating that it's, quote, a cruel bill designed specifically to harm trans South Carolinians and offering to discuss the bill with him. However, Representative Pace responded by telling him that it is, quote, cruel to affirm transgender people and that instead he should, quote, repent and hope that, quote, the Lord shows him mercy. These are the people who are running our country. Horrendous. 
Also, the idea that sex is not assigned is literally factually false. Yes, of course, intersex conditions are often not visible, and when they are, they will literally assign a sex and give them non-consensual surgery. Yeah, every single one of these bills has an exception for doing corrective surgeries on intersex babies and their genitals and their reproductive organs. They make it okay to remove perfectly healthy organs from those children. That's fine. But yeah, and then that's also, you can't know until later if they're gonna grow up with a sex difference of some sort. But yeah, it's oh, it's only observed, okay? This is how they position themselves as like being on the side of facts and logic, whatever, is that they go, hmm, well, hmm, it's not like, you know, we're assigning something. It, these are the people who don't understand that the construct of binary sex is of itself like a stupid social construct. Intersex people are forced to socially transition as well. That's, yeah, of course. So yeah, a lot of the same type of stuff going on in numerous countries and people generally not understanding why this is horrendous or people do understand why it's horrendous and they just want to harm trans people anyway. I'm sure we'll be seeing more and more of this. It's not going to stop anytime soon. Observed and assigned sex is basically the same and the observation of intersex or suspected to be intersex kids is often ignored or misdocumented. Like with me, they outright lied to me and my parents. Yeah, doctors do weird stuff like that as well. They will just say, oh, you know, we decided to do this or whatever. You know, it's just, they'll say, oh, this kid will definitely get cancer. So you need to sign off on this surgery. And there's like not really any evidence that an intersex person who's born with internal testes is at any increased risk of cancer. They're healthy body parts unless otherwise indicated, like removing them preventatively just because they might, like they might be cancerous later because you just assume that intersex bodies are unnatural and will become cancerous. Yeah, they call it a deformity, which has to be... It's ironic that they say we indoctrinate people as if they don't assign gender to the dumbest things for no reason and then demand you follow it. It's very cult-like. Welding and splitting wood is for men. Only women can wear dresses and bake cookies. This is much more than mere fabric and having fun, blasphemer. Yeah, ascribing all of these behaviors to an ontological, quintessentially gendered soul. And they accuse us of relying on, on gender and sex stereotypes like, oh, gender is not a stereotype. Meanwhile, they always do this. It's the TERFs especially. They go, wear whatever you want. You know, you don't need to be a different gender. And then Harry Styles wears a dress and they get so fucking mad. Having breasts increases your chance of breast cancer. If that's a good enough reason to remove them from intersex boys, then shouldn't we also be protecting cis girls from cancer by removing their breasts? This should in fact be a breastless society. Yeah. Like, I don't think that boys having breasts, like that they have an increased risk of breast cancer than girls who might have breasts. But you know, the fact that they have any risk of breast cancer at all is unacceptable, I guess. In families that have the BRCA2 gene, I do think that men are sometimes, they do sometimes get breast cancer, but obviously like it's just in that area and not like they have titty. Stateless, classless, moneyless, boobless society. This is the future the left wants. True. We want moneyless, classless, stateless, no sex characteristics society. Everyone has to be androgynous all the time. Ow. And uh, no one is allowed to have gender. Gender will be canceled permanently in the future. No more gender. <laughs> canceled. Ken or Barbie. That's it. No bits. It's the opposite of the cyborg future where we have interchangeable genital parts that we can just like, you know, that's the detaching and reattaching hydraulics sounds. If you were confused. Also a good point to make conversion therapy commonly uses pornography to help retrain the mind of these children. How is that not abuse? Corrective rape was common in those institutions till the nineties when many were shut down. The horrendous things that have happened to our people are just far, far too extensive to list. And people think, oh, well, you have a pride month, which means that you're accepted in society now. Like, are you, girl, are you for serious? Like people use electroshock therapy while we're like, they basically, what is it they, they do with the using pornography to help retrain the mind in conversion therapy? They have you like look at gay and then they use electroshock therapy on you so that you associate gay arousal with like being shocked, which, you know, some people will joke like it just gave me a shock fetish, but like it's still you know, obviously a fucked up thing to do to somebody. As an intersex gender non-conforming person, this makes me feel like I am the next stage of human evolution. Sterile, beautiful, and leftist. They also stimulate serotonin when showing them straight. Ooh. So they drug you. 
to stimulate serotonin release when showing you straight God, that's disgusting. Hi, thank you so much to all of my patrons, especially Diago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Amanda B, Michelle Frateroli, Michelle Winter, Wellington Marcus, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Pastnell Infinity, Nova, Elizabeth Bartell, Sojo, Sarah A, Athiet, Kevin Young, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, Mr. Atheist, and Ella V. Nobody.